What's so fascinating uh, about uh, these storyboards, and, and for those of you who don't know, storyboards are a way that filmmakers um, use a conceptual artist to illustrate what a scene will eventually look like in a finished film. And, and why do we do that? The reason is um, so that specifically when the visual effects are designed, effort isn't wasted on shots that won't show up in the uh, finished uh, movie, or at least that's the idea behind it. So more often than not, uh, storyboards are used for complicated visual effects scenes and, and action scenes. Uh, uh, they can also be done for standard dialogue scenes for a director to plan out certain angles. Uh, Hitchcock, of course, was famous for literally storyboarding every shot of his movie, and he basically felt that he had finished move, you know, shooting a movie before he even began filming because he had literally storyboarded every frame. And for him, the production of the film was the least interesting part of making the movie. In the case of the legendary Star Star Trek the motion picture uh, it, it, it's a particularly fascinating story because of course you're looking at uh, a movie that began its life as a TV movie uh, for uh, the never produced Star Trek phase 2 in the late 70s and then became a motion picture a first a lower budget motion picture and then a higher budget motion picture here we're looking at storyboards of the Enterprise the beautiful ship uh, designed uh, of course, a combination of Mike Miner, Andrew, Andrew Probert, uh, jumping to warp. Now, this is very different than the TV series, of course, and it was important to the filmmakers Bob Wise and Gene Ronberry that uh, there be something special. Uh, eventually, as you'll see, the finished effect is somewhat different. It's sort of a rainbow kaleidoscope, but uh, in this we see the Enterprise as it jumps to uh, warp. And of course, it was really important for uh, Gene Roddenberry to ground these kind of effects in actual science. So a warp bubble is uh, literally created, allowing the Enterprise to travel faster than light. And uh, Gene, of course, uh, consulted with everyone from legendary science fiction authors like Isaac Asimov, and then he had uh, Jessica Van Puttemaker, who was uh, the science advisor on Star Trek The Motion Picture. This was something that was very important to him. You know, particularly throughout the 70s, you see Gene consulting with all manner of uh, experts on science and the future and uh, incorporating that. And of course, that's where the idea of sort of a warp, warp bubble comes from, whereas uh, originally for the TV series, it was just a way to account for uh, a ship that went fast than light because it wouldn't be a very interesting uh, TV series if uh, a starship couldn't travel fast than light. You'd be spending nine episodes getting to uh, whatever planet you uh, were trying to uh, get to in the uh, in the solar system, let alone the galaxy. So uh, there you have it. Uh, you see um, the very early iterations of the Enterprise jumping to warp speed uh, for Star Trek The Motion Picture, an effect that was subsequently modified uh, for Star Trek The Next Generation, in which the Enterprise is sort of elasticized, but uh, very much grounded in the groundbreaking work of Star Trek The Motion Picture in 1979. This is... Um